Hello and welcome to Gamification, uh, the use of badges to create a growth mindset by Anna Love and Garth Holman. And this is for the Neotech conference that was canceled. All right, hello. Um, my name is Anna Love. Um, I am Mr. Holman's student teacher this year at Beechwood Middle School. Just a little background about myself. Um, I graduated from Miami University in 2017 with a degree in international studies. I'm currently um, in the Cleveland area um, studying at Ursuline College to earn my master's in seventh through 12th grade integrated social studies. So that has led me to Garth Holman's classroom um, and I'm enjoying being his student teacher this year. So yeah, so I'm Garth Holman. Um, I have been teaching uh, seventh grade social studies for about 26 years, I believe. Um, I've also taught at the university level for 14 years in graduate school of education in their technologies classrooms. Um, and I present quite a bit about technology around, so. I'm happy to be here today. Yeah, and before we go on, real quick, just so everybody um, is aware, this was going to be my my first presentation at an educational conference, which I was really excited about. But due to the circumstances, um, we are going to be obviously recording this. Um, so we're going to do our best to make this smooth for you all. So let's get started. All right, so what are badges? When you think of badges, I personally first think about when I was a Girl Scout and I would try to earn certain badges for things like learning to tie a knot or selling a certain amount of Girl Scout cookies. Um, I know a lot of people also think of the Boy Scouts. I included a photo of my younger brother who is an Eagle Scout displaying all of his um, glorious badges that you can see there. He loved, loved to earn them. It really motivated him. So similar to these physical badges that we see with the Scouts often are digital badges in the classroom. So digital badges symbolize educational achievements and learning goals that students meet. Um, I really enjoy using them. They can be differentiated for all learners, they can be tied to standards, um, or they can be for certain skills that students are displaying that have nothing to do with grades. Um, and then creating badges is such a fun thing. It's a creative thing to do. Um, it could be very personalized, individualized to your classroom. And then our students, um, they display them online on their blogs that they have. Um, so it's a great way just to see those achievements that our students are making and it really motivates them to reach those new goals. So, Badges in everyday life. When I was first thinking about badges in the classroom, I didn't really think that it had anything to do with real life and adulthood, really. Then I started thinking, places all around are using badges. Starbucks motivates you to go there every day by giving you stars for a certain amount of um, drinks that you buy that earn you um, kind of new benefits, all right? Um, I know that Jeep, gives out badges for certain things. Um, Mr. Holman, do you want to talk a little bit about, I know that you have a special um, badges that you earn for exercise, correct? Yeah, that's a T-Mobile image in the corner. Your uh, iPhone has uh, an exercise app that you get awarded badges as you go and you get daily records. Um, my insurance company sends badges to me for safe driving. It is everywhere in everything we're doing, and it really comes from video games. So at the beginning, we had said the gamification. So it's this idea that badges show that you've leveled, you've achieved something when you don't have a grade card is kind of the way to think about gamification. It's back to these ideas of videos. Do you want to add a little bit more to that concept of gamification? And we do see badges everywhere, I think. I think most people know that, especially at the end of emails, people saying, I am Google certified. <laughs> yeah, Google Google has really um, jumped on this badge train um, a lot. I actually saw this tweet. I was on um, my teacher Twitter, and I saw that um, Dublin City Schools down in Columbus gives out badges to their professional development. So this is not just for um, students, just for 
the Boy Scouts, like we looked at, this is um, something that really applies to students of all ages and, as we can see, adults in the real world. Um, Oh, well, actually, uh, we got. I'll be uh, straightforward on this. The website we we're using to build from, I actually got from Streetsboro City Schools. I saw a presentation they did on badges. They're only doing it for their staff through PD. So, like, if you do a Google form, you might get one. Um, I I had tried other other ways to make the badges, but this one seemed fairly easy, as we'll get to in a few more minutes. But that's another school district that could be listening to this. That is part of Neo uh, Tech. That um, is where I saw them actually presenting about how they were using it for PD with their staff. Yeah. Um, so before we move on, just real quick, I wanted to ask, I mean, why are these companies like Starbucks or Google or an insurance, why are they using badges? Um, Mr. Holman, wh why, why are you into these badges that you get for, for fitness, for walking? I mean, what does it make, do for you personally? Well, I think for, I mean, when you look around the whole concept of badging or this leveling up is the way I'm going to kind of refer to it, because that's what really the badges are doing. They're trying to get you to level up, to do more. So they're intrinsically motivating for a certain group of people. Some people don't care about badges, um, just like the normal student. You know, some kids, this is going to, this is going to pull them in and suck them in because intrinsically they like that visual reward that they can see. So as you watch or, or as people get badges, especially if they buy into it, getting a badge only leads to wanting to get the next badge. It, right. it is intrinsically motivating to achieve that, which is what I got into with that exercise thing. You know, they kept saying, this is your longest exercise move. Well, that kept going for 500 and some odd days because I'm like, well, I can't let it end. I can't let it end. It's just this intrinsic piece then that grabs hold of you. So you know, it, it's it's a visual sign too, like with the Google certified and how Google's using it. It's a visual sign to tell other people you have some set of skills, right? The, right. the credentials will say, you know, and if you're a gamer, it's really for that purpose. It's for credentials when you're playing other people in games. You already have these credentials, you have these extra weapons, you have these extra outfits. So it just depends on where it is, but I think it's a lot of intrinsic motivation for kids to you know, maybe it's that natural desire to get get more in some way. You you want what you don't have, so you're constantly trying to improve to get those things. Right. Okay. So, my approach to teaching going into it, I was really wanting to find a way um, to kind of expand my students' um, minds to get them really motivated to um, learn in different ways. Um, we'll talk about it in the next one, but grades often kind of limit students um, thinking and their ability. It kind of is, if I get this grade, I'm done. So I really wanted to find a way to promote a growth mindset with their learning for them to know that there's all of these opportunities for them out there and learning has several different paths. Um, something else that I really wanted students to engage in is taking risks and with risks come failure. Students are so afraid of failure. So by including badges, it's kind of a way for students to take risks that it's lower stakes. Um, and it really encourages them to take that leap of faith out in their learning journey to try something new. Um, anything else you want to say about that one, Mr. Holman? No, I think, I think like just the idea of doing badges or trying new things that are that are probably going to be hard for a teacher to implement that you struggle a little bit. That's good for kids to see, to understand that you're not afraid to try new things. You're not afraid to see how it plays out. Um, but I do, you know, I, I tell the kids from the beginning of the year, which you've heard me say many a times, you know, if I give you a rubric, you do exactly what I tell you to do. You're a cook, right? You're following a recipe for success. Badges let us create chefs, kids who can manipulate and play and figure out how to make things that are far beyond what we thought they could do. But you have to give them the opportunity to do that. And Badges lets that growth mindset come into play, where it's not just a grade. It's about being able to accomplish something you didn't think you could accomplish before we started. And we'll see that on the badges when we look at the kids' examples. Yeah. So within a school, we kind of already talked about this a little bit, but within a classroom, I mean, there's so many barriers to this growth mindset, to being able to take risks in a safe environment, to try new things. Um, 
as I said, students are so afraid of failure oftentimes, and these grades really put an end or a cap on learning. Oh, if I just earn a B, then I'm done. I've made it. Or if I just earn a C, I don't have to do anything more. Um, these badges are really a visual, intrinsic motivation to to kind of break that barrier of grades. I want to go beyond the grades. Once I get an A, learning kind of stops. You've made it. I want students who are earning those A's or whatever the grade is to know that they can go beyond that. There's a lot more, but grades don't really, schools don't really um, reward students for doing even more. But badges, it's endless, the amount of things that we can recognize students for doing. They're going above and beyond. Um, so it's really just a great way to motivate students to do more. Um, so my one of my biggest challenges thinking about badges was what does this have to really do with grades? Because in, grades are a part of our schools. Um, so oftentimes um, we like to say ba our badges, they're communicating the story behind the grade. So yes, you can get an A or you can get an 80%. What does that mean though? Badges are really a visual way to show you, hey, yes, you got an A, but you got it for creating VR, or you got it for um, writing historical fiction. Um, and then a lot of these, they can be tied directly to the standards. So if the standard is for math, the student learns, um, and now I'm struggling because I'm not a math person, um, linear equation. To represent that visually, there can be a badge that shows this student has met that standard. That student has met that learning outcome. And then there can be higher badges for even going above and beyond that standard. Um, anything you want to mention about that, Mr. Holman? Well, I think the quotes may be the best thing down there, is that recognition is the best motivator. I, I think the badge they're looking at is our principal watching mm -hmm. in our classroom, watching the kids' VR they created. I don't know yeah. how many seventh grade students in the state of Ohio are creating VR where the principal's coming in and just hanging out watching what they did. For them to see that badge and to see other people come in and look at their work and to see it, it's the whole concept that we've talked about for years with, if kids create for you, they'll do good enough, but if they create for the world, they will do the best they can. And so I think for kids to see and, and to know that they other people are looking at their work, it changes the type of work they do. So that quote to me that recognition is the best motivator, you know, and especially having somebody like the principal or whomever it may be come in and look at that work, that makes a difference for kids. And it does encourage them, hey, that's something I want to be able to do. And we didn't directly teach that. We gave them the opportunity to learn how to do that. Yeah, something that was kind of unintended. I didn't really foresee this, but I probably should have. It's probably my lack of experience. Students kind of became very competitive with, the, with these badges. They, they really wanted the more rare badges that we put out, like VR, creating VR. That's a difficult task. I mean, I had no idea how to do that before, and I'm still not an expert at it by all means at all. But this, we saw these students suddenly becoming competitive. Oh, I, I need to get that badge because it's more rare, and only a certain amount of students have that one. So they were really, um, it's kind of brought in like a competitive piece, which I guess now I'm realizing goes back to the... Video idea game. of gamification. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a game. It's competitive. It really is a new way to motivate students to kind of do new things. So I thought that that was really interesting that that ended up occurring. Well, I'll just say one quick thing about that. I think I've said that many a times in the classroom as well, where I say, hey, life is a game. It is a game. And so when they see um, those rare badges, like they want the Twitter badge, they want right. the they want the conference badge. Like, so kids will get a conference badge for what we're going to show today of their work, right? That your work is so outstanding. Other people have to see what you're doing. Like for them, that's a, that's a big deal, right? So it certainly has, but that is the gamification. That's what it's, that's gamif gamification of school. You're turning it into something beyond grades. Mm -hmm. All right. So we can say all this, but um, what it really comes down to is what kids think about it. Like we said earlier, um, badges only work if you buy into it. This is for adults and students alike. If you don't care about earning badges, then that just doesn't motivate you. 
So we did a little survey with our students. I wanted to know if they cared about these badges that we had been doing throughout the year. So the first thing we asked them was, do you work harder or do you try new things to earn badges? As you can see, if you look at this um, pie chart, 43%, almost 44% of the students said, yes, they try new things. At first, when I saw that, I was a little bit disappointed. I was confused. I thought it would be higher. But then when I thought about it, 43% of my students are trying things that they would not have tried without that badge. 43% of my students are working harder. I mean, I thought that that was very powerful. I thought that that was a great indication um, to continue to use badges. Yeah, and I think if you if we dug into that data a little more, it would be interesting the kids that it did impact. Mm -hmm. You know, some of your gifted kids were up in that 44%. Some of your special ed kids are in that 44%. But it's not like all the gifted kids fell into that. Like yeah. some of them, it was just a, but you know, I, I looked at that and I'm like, my gosh, if most teachers could get 40% of their kids to do more or try harder by one thing they're implementing in school, they would be pretty darn happy about that. Yeah. And you know, when you start to look at that, that was 57 responses because not every student in seventh grade responded. I don't remember when we did that, but mm -hmm. um, that's still, you know, that's uh, 35, 40 kids or 30 kids that are doing more than they normally would or trying something different. That's a lot. Yeah. And I mean, trying new things, I think that's the most powerful thing. That's how you learn things, trying new things, making mistakes, taking those risks. And I mean, 43% are doing that. So I think that that's a great indication. This next one, um, do you like earning badges? Do you enjoy them? So this one, um, made me smile, 56% of our students said that they like doing it. Um, but what's interesting, 15%, I guess it is, and then 28%, 15% said, no, they don't like it. They don't care about it. 28% said that they are not sure. So as we've said, this does not work for every single student. There's not one solution to motivating kids, I've realized. Um, but 56% of our kids say that they like doing it. And I mean, I think that's a great thing. Well, that's interesting though, because there's a contradiction between this slide and last slide. Yeah. percent who's saying, I try and work harder, but boy, when I get the badge, I like it. Whether I, they say on the, the slide before, I work harder, I don't necessarily work harder or try new things, but when I get the badge, I like it. There's kids yeah. that are saying that. Like they like the badge, but they're not gonna do a ton to, to earn that badge. Right. But that's typical you would see from middle school age kids, you know? Yeah. And it's still recognizing their their work. So that is interesting though. And in a nutshell, there were kids in that 15% that wrote things like, you know, it's a little childish for me. Like they see themselves as too mature for collecting those badges. But I've seen it in high schools too, where high school kids are getting badges. So this is not, like we said, there are gonna be kids that this just doesn't appeal to. Yeah, and actually even beyond high school, I read something that one in five um, universities are using digital badges for their undergraduate and graduate kids and um, students. And we also saw that it's used in professional development. So, I mean, humans are kind of the same, no matter what age you are, you're motivated by something and you're not motivated by certain things. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to highlight like one or two of these, what our students are saying about badges. We uh, um, asked them their thoughts about them. Um, and I think, this is the most powerful thing about badges by far. Um, so badges motivate me to work harder because it makes me feel like I'm working or I've worked hard. The badges for me makes me feel like my work paid off. Um, it's, it's incredible to me that grades might make a student feel that way, but the badges are doing that for sure. I think that that's awesome. Um, Badges make me want to work harder and study for any knowledge tests. That's our quizzes or our tests. So they're studying harder because of these badges. Um, they make me try new things, another student says, because it's fun. And it's also fun to see how your extra work is thought of. That goes right back to that quote. Recognition is the greatest motivator. Um, and then, Mr. Holman, did you want to just mention the one at the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually mentioned it last slide. Yeah. Where he says it's kind of childish and we're treating them a little bit like kids. But <laughs> again, uh, uh, you know, we're doing surveys with the remote learning and we've got kids that are coming to different activities that they're earning badges for with interviews with people from 
so far we've talked to people in Bulgaria and we've talked to people in Canada and the kids that come want their batch. Yeah. So it is, but it isn't. I mean, I get that kid and that's okay. But just like that, we did another survey today with them about the online learning. You have some kids that like contract grades and some kids that don't. We do a variety of things. No one thing is the end all be all of, of a classroom, a good classroom. Right. You have a lot of variety. This is another tool that if 43% of your kids work harder, it's a good tool to have. So if you're wondering how you can apply this in your own classroom, um, the criteria is really up to you. Um, I mentioned earlier, we give out badges for kind of three main categories. We give it out for content, such as earning a certain grade on um, a knowledge check or a quiz. Um, and that kind of represents, hey, you've, you've mastered this standard, such as um, learning about the enduring impacts of ancient Greece. If you got a certain grade on a knowledge check, you earn a badge. Hey, you've mastered this standard. We also give them out for, um, for mastering a, a, a new t technology or a software, such as trying a Thing Link or a Samore or a Satori. We'll actually see some student examples of those. Um, and it, that one is really powerful to me because it's that is trying new things. Students are motivated to try these new, more difficult maybe technologies um, because of badges. And then the last one, we give them out for for soft skills. So if I, if I notice a student that is um, being an, an exceptional leader, or if students are collaborating together to accomplish a task, um, they earn a badge. And that one is kind of like a, it's really it, um, boosts their integrity, I would say, because we're watching them, even when they don't know we're watching them and we'll kind of privately send a badge, hey, thanks for being a leader, here's a badge, display it on your blog so that others can see. Um, so that's how we do it. But as you can see on this slide, it talks about several different ways that you can implement badges in your classroom. And it can be totally tailored to any subject, any age, um, and yeah, anything else on that one, Mr. Holman? Uh, no, we're at about 25 minutes, so we're going to move along. Okay. All right. So just for an example, um, for mastering or trying a new software, we're going to look at how we do it for ThingLink, for example. We like to do some of our badges in levels. So if you just try it, you're an apprentice. You earn the apprentice badge. See how we do them? We always have the apprentice as a circle, so you can recognize that. But then if you do something a little more um, time consuming or with a little bit more skill, whatever that criteria is that you set, you're on to the next level. You're a developer now. And then our last level, if you do whatever criteria we set, like with ThingLink, I believe it was Actually, I'm going to blank on what it was. Was it the 360 VR? 360, 360 VR. 360 VR and thing like. Yeah, then you have reached the highest level. You're a trailblazer. Um, only a few of our students have earned that one. That's a more rare badge. Um, but we do it. a live link. Those yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Let's go right down quick and run through them. So on the so, apprentice, no kid in seventh grade had ever used ThingLink. So we taught them how to use ThingLink, and this was their first attempt at ThingLink. So all they had to do was learn how to put the buttons on an image and how to um, proceed to explain what whatever the criteria was. In this case, there were f uh, six dots. They had to put each color represented a different idea, and that has information in it. That's Every kid in seventh grade got that badge. They accomplished that task. So these are what are called Tadokens. We won't get into that. That's another <laughs> different presentation. <laughs> so our developer thing link, um, as this comes up, this was if you could now embed a YouTube video into thing link. That was the criteria that we set for this. It takes a little bit more time, a little bit more finagling with technology. Um, but as you can see, the student now has done something more. They've embedded. Well, that there. That's really, well, that video was actually made by another student five years before. So they're using other kids' work. It's If you look, that YouTube's for me. That's a kid oh, yeah. in our class. That's kind of okay. cool. <laughs> um, the other piece to that is they had to, they had to learn how to embed websites. So there's readings in there. There's more to that. And then there was level three, which we did not directly teach. I made a tutorial of how to do this and gave it as an option. And um, actually, a lot more kids did this than 
uh, there was probably about 50 kids that did this. And so up at, these are three, there's three examples. So these are 360 that you could put goggles on. The goggles are, if you look at yours in the bottom right hand corner mm -hmm. of theirs, there's the glow goggle icon. So you put these in VR and you click them. Now they're in VR and they can use this um, in goggles and read is, and learn about it. This is really cool. I mean, we're in, we're, this is Rome, correct? Yeah. We're in Rome. And I mean, this student has included extra, if I click this, I believe it takes me to a video. Um, so well, they're that doing a read. well, maybe that's the video. There's a reading too somewhere. But even if you exit out of the maximization of that, there's two other ones underneath where they had to steal from somebody else. So there's three kids right there that did that and got that badge. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. The other two below would be a developer badge. Mm -hmm. They've added imagery, they've added YouTube, but they haven't turned it into a 360. So those three kids above got the 360 badge. Those three or two kids at the bottom didn't. So there's where the leveling comes in. You've learned a new task, a new skill. All right. Go back to present. Okay, so um, I believe it's the next slide. Yep. So yeah. one of the one of the difficulties I think is how you organize them, how you actually get them out to the students. There's several ways to do that. I just wanted to briefly mention um, I've organized ours into a um, Google Excel sheet. Um, that's been great for organizing them. I would say we also have them on Google Drive in several different folders that I add to um, as the year progresses. Um, but that was definitely one of the struggles. How do we organize this? How do we send these out to students? Um, our students have what's called a daily assignment Google Doc, and um, we often post the badges that several students or the most of the class has earned. We kind of post it there for them to take screenshots on, to post on their blogs. We also email them out um, privately when it's smaller amounts or if it's for a certain soft skill that we noticed. Um, so that is definitely something that is a little bit of a struggle to figure out how to do. But Mr. Holman, you want to speak on that a little bit? I'll just add the content. So if you look down, I, even on this Excel spreadsheet, we have Middle Age Quest 1 through 10, where they, these are their content scores on quizzes. Those are actually embedded on a website. So it, it's all done electronically. So when the kid takes the electronic quiz, they immediately get their score. They can immediately grab the badges. So we have them there from 80 to a 94 is what we call mastery. And anybody who gets a 94 or higher on those uh, knowledge checks would then take the expert badge. Um, that's the way it's written. I think we ended up changing it to 80 to an 89 and a 90 to 100. Yeah. Um, but either way, um, those badges are available online all the time. They're just sitting there. As soon as you get done with your quiz, you can grab them. And we pretty much, to be honest, go on the trust with the kids. And the yeah. kids have not cheated us yet that we know of. You know, there might be a kid who stole a badge somewhere and slapped it up there. But generally speaking, um, trust your students to do the right thing, and most of them will. Yeah. All right. So this is kind of the best part. You get to see how um, our students are displaying these. So, um, well, Mr. Holman, actually, I'm going to let you. Do you want to mention anything about the Weebly blogs, get into that, or should I just show them? You can go to it while you're going to it. It'll take a second to open them and load. Um, we probably time-wise, I don't know how many of these we'll look at. So every seventh grader in my class for about 15, well, 14 years has made a website. So we run a website, we use Weebly, um, and they create four pages for in the class. There's a home page, a content map page, which is my maps. Um, and then there is a social studies blog page where 90% of the work they turn in is done through the web. And then there's badges. So we just build a separate page for badges. Um, the students then go through, and as you can look, this, this particular student, I don't even know who's we're looking at right now, but they've leveled all the way up in the in the Weebly thing. There's my map projects they've done, or in my map and Google Earth. There's their extra badges. So this is kind of what we're talking about, where there's just things they're getting. Like the Twitter badges. I don't know if all these are linked. Do we know? It is. <laughs> so this was linked to why she got it. So her homepage badge, we were so impressed with what she built for her homepage way back at the beginning of the year that that got tweeted out. So she linked it directly so people that came and looked at her badge could see exactly where she got the badge for. So if we go back to her badges, my assumption is she got another Twitter badge. Let's see what she got that for. Oh, this is her Google Earth tour, I think. Yeah. Um, well. 
Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Sir Googler tour where she took us around the, the world showing us the development of um, democracy. So, and that was a new skill they had learned. They had never learned how to use, well, they, they couldn't have because it just came out a month before we did it. So they, they never had a chance to do it. But if she goes back and looks at the badges, what we tried to get them to do was to link everything to the event for why they got the badge. Yeah, and some of these I just wanted to mention like, for example, this is a soft skill, collaboration. She got the developer badge, which is a level two badge for collaborating. Um, we've encouraged our students to include captions on why. So this says, working with, uh, I'm sorry, working with Lillian to connect a historical fiction story. So we know that she earned this badge. I don't know, does it link? No, this one doesn't link. But she's earned this badge because she collaborated with a classmate um, and they were writing historical fiction and they connected their characters in the Middle Ages. It was really neat. Um, so we also have these captions. This one was for a Google Meet with Mr. Holman's former student who lives in Bulgaria that she attended via um, Google Meet. So that one is pretty neat as well. And as you go down, there's your software. So she leveled up in the software, actually pretty interesting. She leveled up in a lot of things if you look. So she's a kid who wanted to get the badges, right? We're seeing a lot of threes, combination of threes, right? And then our current events, Kahoot, we play a weekly Kahoot game with the school in Columbus, Ohio over the web. Um, and every time the class wins, they get a badge. Um, so you can kind of see it, how they, um, how they set theirs up. We'll take a look at one other one. I, I think they're basically the same, right? I mean, yeah. we're basically seeing the same thing. Um, but each kid is creating this page and sort of establishing what they want. And so how for example, I mean, talking about visually, we can see this student only made it to the second level of Weebly. Um, so I like that you can see when we layer it that you can, or I'm sorry, when we do levels, you can, right away see what that student did. So yeah, we know that if you go back to that map one, I know what that means is that kid learned the basic countries of Europe that we wanted them to know. And we allowed them to know all the countries of Europe. So there were two more levels. She didn't go on any beyond that. She just, I'm just gonna know the ones you say I have to know. <laughs> right, and I believe like this grade, if, if you learned all of them, this was an A, this was a good grade for getting this. So right. levels beyond that, they didn't receive a higher grade, but they earned that badge. And you can see the kind of leveling up and then the spirit. Oh, the spirit badge, that was the best. That was fun. All right. But you get the idea of how the kids are using them. And again, we're up to about um, we're up to about forty minutes right now, so we okay. we're okay. We don't need, the links are. We're going to have the slideshow available, so they can look all they want at that. But you get the idea of how they're set up. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to mention with this, we've already kind of talked about this, but really quickly, this is I added this slide actually um, a couple days ago. In this new online world that teachers have found themselves in. This is a great time to start doing badges. I mean, personally, at our school and where we are in Ohio, we don't know what's going to happen with grades. So we've continued to give out these um, motivating badges to recognize that students are still doing work during this time. Um, we don't know how grades are going to play out. They want to know. We don't know. But badges right now is perfect for this kind of staying at home learning that we're doing. These are just a couple examples. We, um, we've given students badges for joining optional events. So again, we see students trying new things, um, doing things they wouldn't normally do to earn these badges, such as we did some uh, review cahoots. We did some interviews with a former student from Bulgaria. We did it with a historian from Canada. Um, and we just, this one in the middle, I really enjoyed because um, it's all of our seventh graders um, who we miss seeing, but for just that day one completing, I believe it was like a Google form check-in, just how are you guys? They earned that badge. So something as simple as that. So I really encourage if you're looking for, for a way to recognize your students' achievements during this time, um, badges is a great way to do that. For the practical purposes of time, do you want to build one since we have a tutorial or since we're giving them the link, do you think at that point the tutorial will be able to show them how to do that? Um, I could just really briefly just click mm -hmm. on this really quick just to show you what the website look, looks like. There's a lot of websites and um, software programs 
for badges. This is a free one. Mr. Holman showed me this one. Um, I like it because it's real easy. So over here, we can just see our templates. They're real easy to, to build. I mean, over here we see we have text that we can add. So I can add text that you um, attended a conference or whatever you want to add to that. Um, I can add images, icons, ribbons. Um, so if I want to make this look a little bit better, I can add a ribbon. And it's really easy to edit. Um, it's a lot like using a Google Doc or like a Microsoft Word, I would say. Um, and then we download them up in the upper um, corner right here. It asks for an email address, but it's never once ever emailed me anything. So it's a great program. And then we just click download now. It downloads onto your computer and you have your badge. Um, you can make a lot cooler ones than this, but I just wanted to briefly show you what the website looks like. I've also included a tutorial on this presentation um, that talks a little bit more in depth about some details that you can use to make your badges more visually attractive. Um, anything else on that, Mr. Holman? No, I think that's fine. Yeah, so check out this tut tutorial to see how to build badges like you've been seeing in this presentation. <laughs> so when our students earn badges that we email to them privately, they get a badge alert, and I always have it in all caps with explanation marks in the subject line, badge alert. So for watching this presentation, um, you all have earned a badge. Um, digital badging for a growth mindset. So this could be displayed on your professional website or it could be printed out for you to have in your classroom. Or, um, But we hope that it makes you feel recognized and like you've made um, an accomplishment today by um, trying something new, thinking about something new, a new way to motivate your kids. So um, again, thank you guys for listening to this. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. We have our contact information here. You can find both Mr. Holman and I on Twitter, LinkedIn. We have our professional websites, um, our emails. Anything else you want to add about that, Mr. Holman? Uh, no, I think that's good. They can please email with any questions. Uh, you know, um, I'm used to getting quite a few emails. I respond very quickly to those. If you have a question about how to do something. So please don't hesitate to contact us if you have a question or need some help. Yep. Uh, last but not least, just on this last slide, there's a lot of um, articles about digital badges in the classroom. These first couple are just easy reads um, if you're interested in this. I, I find it very interesting, so I actually looked at some research articles. So a couple of these are more in-depth research um, done at um, the graduate level and undergraduate level, so I think that if you're interested, um, go ahead and check it out. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed our presentation on gamification and badges to create a growth mindset in your students. Yeah, and badge alert, I have a badge for you for finally or presenting at your first conference. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'll get that to you. All right. Well, All right. Appreciate everyone uh, taking the time to watch it. Again, email us if you have any questions, and uh, thank you. And thanks to uh, Neotech for taking their asking people to do this. I think it'll be a nice resource for uh, other teachers to be able to view and use if they as they see fit. Yep. Thank you, Neotech.